Shorty Show, podcast 245, Wake and Bake the Morning Buzz, episode 120, action. Alrighty then, fellow slaves and earthlings, looky here, looky here. My name is Craig Reed, a.k.a. The Stone Roadie. And with me, as always and as usual, except for when Kathy Gazi's here on special occasions, my co-host and my co-pilot, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. So what are we going to talk, talk about there on this Monday? Back to work Monday. It's November the 11th, 2024. And what the heck are we going to talk about here this morning? There, well, a lot of people were, were asking about running easy and slow poke. And I was talking to old Joe Crimp on the phone the other day, yesterday, I think it was, day before yesterday. And um, uh, I said, Joe, man, do you have any pictures? Because he doesn't – now, he has some uh, – he had some YouTube things that I didn't know about of of uh, slow poke and i posted them on my facebook on the griff martin facebook um there's like three songs and pretty interesting and i think that was kind of like a a reunion or something that wasn't like a heyday slow poke thing could be wrong about that but i swear i think joe said that and um but this run an easy photo right here uh that i have up behind me um and Craig and I were having a discussion about stage right and stage left. But if you see the guy with the upside down strat over there, um, that's Jim Harrison. Um, and then uh, Ken Lyons is the bass player. And um, then uh, you got Joe Crimp on drums and then Randall Hall. And then the interesting thing about that bass and – Joe told me what kind of bass it was, but I, I can't remember. That was the bass that Ed King was playing when he first started playing with Skinner. And he traded it for a guitar with Ken Lyons, I, from what I understand. So that bass that, that uh, Ken Lyons is playing was Ed King's bass that, that he had when Ronnie fired him. So that's why I thought I'd share that picture. Another reason, because that's a cool, that's a cool uh, picture there. And uh, when he fired him as the bass player, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that was Ed King's bass. Yeah, that's that's Ed's bass. Uh, there's a little history on that from the Run and Easy game. Wow, I wonder where that bass is now. That's pretty yeah, cool. that's a good question. Because Ken Lyons died, didn't he? Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, he had a tragic death. He fell down a, a flight of stairs and there was some suspicion that, uh, that it was a little hanky panky there, but they couldn't prove it. So, um, and, um, uh, the, the, um, there was a uh, another thing that I was going to tell you about. I don't see where I have it written down at here, though. Um, oh, yeah. The Cedar Hills Armory was the first time Ed King played as a lead guitarist for Leonard Skinner, and that was right about the time that, that he got, Ken Lyons got that bass. Um, yeah, so the Cedar Hills Armory, you know where that is? Uh Greg? No, I sure Sounds don't. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah, so that's where Ed first got on stage with a Strat with Leonard Skinner. Now, that's just a little bit of a Joe Crimp running easy, slow poke. And then uh, I talked to Joe, and I said, Hey, Joe, man, I want to get you um, to do the uh, <clears throat> to do the uh, the oak tree trip. You know, to, to, I'm going to take him over there and we're going to videotape everything that happened that night with him and Gary. We're going to start off where the teen club used to be and we're going to go sh 
try to find where the oak tree was and the carport to the house that they ended up in. So that's going to be kind of cool to look forward to uh, for you guys, old Joe Crimp. And, you know, the uh, whiskey bottles, brand new car, oak tree, you're in my way. You know, that's that's the song. And Joe was in the car with Gary. And uh, there's a guy that's going to go with me uh, on the road, and he's going to explain the whole thing, kind of like um, we did with uh, – with old uh, Steve when, when Alan wrecked the car. Uh, so yeah, so that's something cool to look forward to. Uh, but I just thought I'd put that picture up there and then also, uh, let's see if I can, uh, go over here and bring some, uh, some other pictures up. Anybody interested in one of them clear light shirts like Gary's got on there. Those are very rare. I've got an extra large one going up on eBay this week. I don't normally advertise things that on here that I sell on eBay, but that's a pretty rare shirt, so. Oh, yeah? Yeah, clear light. It's got the state of Texas on the back. If you go to my eBay thing, and it, it goes off at uh, 9 o'clock tonight, but, uh, yeah, somebody might want to get that. It's an extra large. Um, here's another picture right here. Of course, you can't even see his face. I'll put it up there, uh, for everybody else to see, but that's black, uh, blackberry smoke. And that's, uh, one of Gary's guitars, um, right there. Uh, what, what, from what I understand, that's not the SG that Gary played, but this is, Blackberry Smoke played at the amphitheater in St. Augustine, and they and they uh, wanted uh, Blackberry Smoke to uh, to play the uh, the SG that used to belong to Gary. But there's actually two of them. One of them was the one that Gary played all the time, um, which I don't know if I have that picture. I think Kent sent it to me, but uh, um, but they only use that for the sound check because it's like a over a million dollar guitar and they didn't want it out on stage and that one that he's got is another one of gary's guitars um i saw uh dale and annie and mary all of them were at that show yeah they and were took a um, picture with uh with uh, is Star. that the picture right there yeah 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 charlie star that's who that is yeah charlie star that uh played the guitar and uh, actually, Shelby, or uh, Stonette, was going to give me a ticket to go to that. She offered it to me, but I couldn't go. It was uh, kind of too short notice. But, um, yeah, so that was, uh, that was pretty I kind of cool. know those guys, those Breckberry Smoke guys. I kind of know those yeah. guys. Yeah. Well, you can yeah. see. You can I've, see I've, I've met them a couple of times. The, uh, the whole thing that they did is on YouTube, Blackberry Smoke. Um, you know, just, uh, go on there and, and Google that and you'll find it. It's, it's all over YouTube right now. And he kind of like did a thing with Freebird. He didn't do the whole Freebird thing. And he was using, looked like a looper and he was, he played like the rhythm part to it. And then he was messing around doing some solo kind of stuff. It was kind of weird, but it sounded good. It's real mellow though. It was like, just uh, kind of like a laid back. The guy sounds a lot like Ronnie, actually. Uh, yeah, so. But anyway, yeah, that's just a little information for that. You know, a little, uh, you guys want to go check that out. They're doing things with Gary's guitars. And, um, yeah, so it's uh, it's just passing on some skin formation, basically. <clears throat> so yeah so that's uh that's all we got on that and um i was seeing a thing craig you were talking about wet willy yeah yeah and yeah you were watching i ran i think i saw that same was it keep smiling smile yeah keep on yeah, smiling that, and it and that wasn't... was 1974 and and we did shows with wet willy in early 1974, and I remember Leslie 
was singing with Donna, Donna Hall, Jimmy Hall's sister. But not in that video, though. Not in that video. Because it was a black and chick I, and some I, I other white chick. I remember Leslie because Leslie was always so cute. You know, I remember her, you know, from when she was young. She was so cute. And, uh, yeah, I um, I, maybe she... But you know, I, had yeah, something. that was uh, she wasn't in that video. I was surprised. Yeah, maybe she didn't get there yet, or something. Must not have. That must have been like early, early seventy four. Because must we have been shows with them. Oh God! I don't and know. what what uh, was that? What was that? That was uh, we did show shows with them in like March or something like that. March or April, and she was with them. Maybe even before that. And you remember what the show was, though? Was it? Uh, we did shows with them down with, um, oh God, Grinder Switch and Marshall Tucker and Wet Willie and, and yeah, they used to throw that Grinder Switch in all the time, you know, yeah. to fill Marshall up Tucker. concerts. Yeah, Marshall Tucker, Grinder Switch, and Wet Willie and elvin bishop and yeah i'd actually seen wet yeah. willie it seemed like wet willie grinder switch elvin elvin bishop they always played together oh yeah yeah they did a lot of shows together and they would do those tea bowls um yeah, yeah cellar, they, door, cellar door and all those uh old uh was that the midnight special that they were on it was wasn't it the midnight special it, it might have been yeah yeah i think right. that's the one that that we yeah that we saw um but yeah so that's uh that's pretty cool and then we have our normal um uh, comments and questions <clears throat> that we can jump into <laughs> uh you got anything uh donation wise craig or anything as a matter yeah. of fact we do yeah yeah uh I'm kind of discombobulated here today. Uh, yeah. Um, Sue M. She was bidding on... Uh, let me get my sheets here. And while I'm thinking about it, Tom Garrett. Yeah, Tom Garrett bought the camera. The camera that uh, we were... We yeah, for auction, Tom Garrett bought that yeah. for one hundred and seventy-five dollars, and I mentioned it on the last podcast, but I failed to have one of these sheets up there, and I, and this is how I keep track of the money. So, but he said that to to donate this to Gene, I believe that's what he said. I, I'm so okay, pretty sure. And uh, yeah, and that camera was. was was donated for us to sell by Robert, by Robert Wheatley. Wheatley. Yeah, Robert Wheatley yeah. donated donated that camera. And what a deal. You can't get with a camera like oh, that. Oh my yeah, that's that that's a four hundred dollar camera and he got it yeah. for hundred and seventy five bucks, you know. Yeah, so you guys that didn't bid on and that it, man, you gave him a, a good deal. It's got a two year warranty on it. Build it I mean it's a two year warranty with it, you know. So yeah. Oh, that's a hell of a deal. That's a that's a great camera. Um, he's got some more. He's got that was a, a a model two. Now he's got some threes also, but they're they're a lot more money, like the ones uh, that uh, that he sent me. And um, Sue Sue M. She uh, she bid on the uh, the vest. I thought she was going to win that vest for $125. And um, she, she sent them, she sent the, a check for 125 bucks. But then uh, Jeff, Jeffrey, <laughs> uh, Mark, 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 Mark Annette, that bid 150 on it. And, uh, and she said, uh, she said, "You know, just uh, just keep that one twenty-five and just put it uh, as a donation." And then she wants she wants that uh, she wants that to go to Jean. And then Tom he wants this hundred and twenty-five to go to seventy-five to go to Jean. So that's three hundred bucks going to Jean right there. So that's yeah, that's pretty cool. And. Uh, 
And then, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, oh, but uh, Jeff, with this, with this vest, he wanted me to uh, include a, uh, a document of authenticity with it. He wanted to know exactly the place where Billy was, was the, the rehab place where he was at. And uh, he was, at, I, and I, it was in California, but it was San Clemente, California. But it was actually, um, it was actually San Juan, San Juan Capistrano is where that was. That's where the the swallows return there every March nineteenth uh, from uh, uh, on uh, Saint Joseph's Day. And, uh, yeah, they migrate in there from Goya, um, Argentina. That's where they migrate from. And, yeah, I was lucky enough to be there one, one, uh, one year when, uh, right there. Oh, on, when they were there? I guess it was yeah. March 19th. I was there on that day when they were there. It's, it's real pretty out there. But I didn't know, I didn't know that was where, where Billy had gone to gone to rehab you know, out there in uh, San Juan Cop Do you remember when he was gone during that time at rehab? Or? I God, I don't. <laughs> it, it it must have been it must have been before I went uh, must be been before I uh went. I went in two thousand three, I think is when I went two thousand and three. So he must have gone in around 2000. Were they screwed up with you guys as they, uh, I, I was listening to Motley Crue and uh, they said when they got to the point where they were injecting Jack Daniels in, <laughs> in a, with a syringe, they said, okay, that's it. We're, we're all going together. The whole yeah. band went together and apparently it worked. I mean, I guess, yeah. You know, they, I'm sure maybe they were drinking clear alcohol or something, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's what Tommy said anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like, like Leon said, he goes, man, I didn't get into rock and roll to be no choir boy, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I got into doing this, you know, I, I didn't get into this to be no choir boy, you know, damn. Oh, oh, and Craig, by the way, um, that patch that goes with the, uh, with that vest, I sent it to you and there's a, a girl that I know that I've known quite a while and we've been friends quite a while. I've never met her. Um, but she donated a thousand dollars. Nita, uh, donated a thousand dollars and, and, uh, man, I, that was, that was a, a nice, donation there Nita. we appreciate that craig's going to be getting it probably wednesday or thursday and I'll yeah find that's out. another 200 bucks for everybody yeah yeah i'll find out if she wants it to go to one person or everybody but she'd probably tell me whatever i think oh, yeah, yeah. something like that we probably ought to split it all up if it's a big lump like that you know well we've get we've give out seven thousand dollars to the survivors this year so far. We still got some, you know, still in the Yeah, it's it's you know. coming in just you know, just about we've gave, gave, gave Gene two thousand and Mark Howard uh Mark Frank two thousand and the rest of them we gave a thousand. Yeah, you know, Leslie and yeah. Paul so Welsh and uh yeah, so if anybody uh, is is of a mind to, uh, you know, you can donate uh, by contacting Craig at the Stone at Gmail dot com. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever, you know, hundred, and it goes to the plane crash survivors. And of course, if you just started uh, watching, Craig is a plane crash survivor himself, but he's like Trump. He doesn't take any money. Well, there's uh, what there's eleven of us survivors out there, but you know, there's yeah. only there's only five five of them that uh, that, that really need it. That, yeah, they're still being hospitalized because of all this, right. You know? Yeah, I, you know, they can't treat my brain damage. It's it's permanent. You know, I, it's not treatable. But 
you know, I'm still kind of functional, you know. Yeah, you, at least, yeah. You know, at least I'm not fat and I voted for Trump, so I'm not totally insane, you know. <laughs> Speaking of that Trump, man, and, you know, that guy, he's been on TV. He's just been just just that guy. He's dialing it in now. He's already got, uh, I guess, the war is going to be ended pretty soon. He's already told Walensky he's not they're not getting any more money. And then that made Putin happy. And so everybody's all giddy over that already. And then except for the liberals who, you know, now they can't. And this is all for entertainment purposes only. They can't launder money through the Ukraine anymore. And then he says no more sex changes. And if anybody in school, like a teacher or something, tries to indoctrinate these children into they're going to jail. Then he's going to clean the uh, the homeless up off the street. He's going to let them go into a tent city only if they seek help, which will be paid for by the government. Um, but if they don't do it, um, they're not going to have a place to stay because they're going to run them out of these parks and everywhere. And that's going to be interesting to see how they're going to do that in California. Then he's declaring war on on the fentanyl and the, in the, in those, uh, those, those damn, uh, cartels over in Mexico, he's actually going to call war just like it was Hamas. And so, yeah, he's, he's not messing around, man. You know, he's not, he's, he's, and I, I believe anything he says he's going to do, he's going to do. Hey, Jeff wants to know what's the deal on, uh, those on Kathy's photos. Are they no longer for up for offer? <clears throat> People were complaining because, <clears throat> well, she's sending one of those sets to, uh, Robert Wheatley for, for that. She had Robert sent her one of those $800 cameras. So. Uh, she felt bad, so she sending him. Uh, she asked him what he, what he, what she could do for him. He said, "I'd like to have a set of those pictures." So she's I, she's gonna she's trying to uh, she's gonna have it taken in. I guess she's gonna take get the uh, to Kathy from Alan Collins or whatever off there and just leave the Alan Collins signature on it. So I don't know. People were complaining because it was personalized, like. Like the Billy Powell jacket, you know, that's why it was kind of. So is it? Is slow. it, it so I don't. I don't know what she's. I don't know what she's doing. She's sending a set to Robert Wheatley and. Uh, so and Jeff, I would say just pretend like it didn't happen, and if it gets offered up again, man, then that's what. <laughs> and that's what when you'll have to look at it again. I well, would just say that ship sailed. Those are the, you know, she was trying to make those for a donation, and I think she was hoping to get a little more than twenty five dollars for three pictures, you know. Right, because it cost uh, a lot of money to to have those things uh, fixed too. So yeah, and that's those probably are, why Craig. That's probably why Craig didn't read it because it wasn't enough to. Well, I know, uh, I know that she. You know, she had those. You know, I know she had them redone. Uh, had them. Uh, redone because they were fading out or whatever. And then yeah, she spent money to do that, and they were for a donation. And I think she wants to give every more buddy more than five dollars a piece for them. You know. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. We'll, we'll, bucks, we'll, we'll see what happens after she when she's done with them, and you know we'll see what she does. So. Yeah. And then Jeff also, he says, uh, how come we don't have uh, stoned roadie shirts for sale? I well, just never made any. I don't know. I'm not really <laughs> into selling my I own. sell T-shirts, you know. I'm not really them. into promoting myself. I don't know. I sell, you know, I just, I don't know. I'll, I got, I got some, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> I just, I don't know. It's the same reason I don't send out that other stuff, you know. I'm, I mean, I mean, at least I keep up with sending out the money. That's all I can say. I do good, but I'm gonna send those other stuff out. I'll send that stuff. I need to, I need to get that stuff out of my way so I can do. Yeah, because it's coming there. up on, I believe, like nine months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon it'll be a year. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just, but, I'm just uh, glad I yeah. stopped it. <laughs> I'm lame. Hey, I got brain damage, man. You know, I, 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 I try to get it together. I, I work on it and then it, it kind of gets away from me and where you I'm, could I be, got, I'm busy, you know, I'm busy guy. Well, you could probably go into the store and put a candy bar in your pocket and walk out with it. And if they say something, you could go, I was in a plane crash. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 don't you know i'm the stone roadie i can't help it that i accidentally took that and didn't pay for it <laughs> yeah so um, maybe one day we'll get some shirts you know now that we're not going to go off the air because uh you know mr t unless they have some kind of a emp uh disaster or something which and I swear it's, it's too quiet right now. Things are just too quiet right well, now. Well, you know, Jeff, you're really the, you know, I, I, there's really not a lot of requests for them, and I don't want to just do it on my own. If, I, if people start asking for them, then I don't really mind yeah, doing could it. Could you, you know, imagine? We'd have to get somebody else I to don't want. Them. I don't want people to think that I'm all into this to make money because I'm, you know, obviously not. <laughs> oh, well, the proceeds would, would go to the survivors anyway. You know. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if we sold shirts, that money would go to the survivors. So I got on uh, um, Crawl Dad shirt. This is from Dave the Disciple right here. It's a, see it, Craig? Did you get one? No. Uh-uh. Nah, 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 nah. I you know I don't usually get stuff at Craig. I don't. Yet, but... I don't never wear t-shirts anywhere. So <laughs> I got somebody <laughs> dog on t-shirts. I never wear them. <laughs> okay, and so uh, back into the comments. <laughs> Joseph Yemma, Craig, did you ever do any Thorazine? <laughs> Thorazine. I don't think I ever did any Thorazine. That's What's like that a. Was? That's like a, a damn one flew over the cuckoo's nest drug, man. That shit. I remember there was a guy that, that we worked with and he, his, his wife did a number on him, man. I forget what it was that she all that she did to him. She tried to have him killed or something. And, and, uh, and the guy just went out and left field and, and then we would go see him at the middle at the mental place because we felt sorry for him and we called it the Thorazine shuffle because <laughs> he walked fine before he went in there. And then after he went in there, he was like shuffling out of the door shuffling. It was like he was walking on rice paper or something, trying not to rip it. Then they, no, and, and he was on Thorazine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was on Thorazine. So that's some, that's some heavy mind altering stuff right there. Uh, Joseph, but, uh, I don't think that's something, you know, <laughs> that you do recreationally. I you, might've you, tried it. If I knew it did <laughs> made you do the shuffle like that. I never knew. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That Thorazine shuffle. I, I like stuff that puts you on another dimension. I did. I, as a matter of fact, I went to another dimension last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did some mushrooms, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I was up, down, and all around last night. <laughs> yeah, didn't you say by the time you started seeing colors, you went and laid down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did two, two squares of mushrooms. But, yeah. but that messed your stomach up, huh? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was in, I was in the neon land of the neon and the fifth dimension last night. <laughs> neon light. <clears throat> I remember you were doing those mushrooms there about two years ago, and you were, and you were like getting the stems, and you were, and, and, and you said I, I just eat the candy. Man. You were detoxing with it. And then you, <laughs> you came down with some kind of a stomach thing. I guess you did a little bit too much and you were messed up. Your stomach was messed up for like yeah. a week. Yeah. And you were, you were, uh, crapping worms out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Those worms ain't alive. That stuff, I don't know. It releases toxins. I don't know. What the heck? 
Yeah, if there's any worms, any parasites in you, they're they're no, pretty much, I, I don't have no. Bird. They're they're laid back in there if they are. <laughs> <laughs> they that's why that's why people can't get lose no weight. They got they're all full of parasites. They're all they're feeding they're feeding worms. <laughs> that's nasty that's what man. they're doing the, you know that's <laughs> what they you know when you're eating all that candy at night that's what them worms are telling you to eat that candy at night. yeah they're saying you're, feed, uh, you're feeding them worms yeah so they what they do is they get you hooked on all this nasty food and then they put worms in the food and then the worms keep you wanting to eat it's like a whole <laughs> vicious cycle they say 80 percent of people got parasites but you know everybody Sits there and goes, ah, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you know, whatever. Yeah, and they say a lot of it. That's why people have diabetes and things like that, you know. But some of these people that, you know, you see them in the store and you're like, you know, I, I, that's a, it is, it is really, it is mental illness when your butt is so huge and you're waddling mm -hmm. down the aisle. And, you know, you're looking for something to eat. You shouldn't be in the center of the grocery store. <laughs> anyway, in the center where, where all of the, uh, the bad stuff is, they say, go and shop on the exterior of the grocery store, like, you know, around the center, because yeah. all the good stuff's in the middle. And then <laughs> they've got that store that we go to, or we go to, I go to uh, Floridians Publix. Um, they, they'll have like a guy in there giving out little samples, you know, like a little piece of cake or, and these people line up and they get three or four of them, you know, <laughs> instead of just taking one to see that, to see if they like it so they could buy it. They're making a meal out of it, you know, while they're in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like them, them women on the view. They, they say the reason that Trump got elected was because, so many uneducated white women voted for him. Uneducated. Well, now they're they're blaming it on that, George what they Clinton. what they meant was unindoctrinated white women. Yeah, <laughs> but their their latest thing is they're blaming it on George Clooney now. So George Clooney saved the free world <laughs> because they said if it weren't for him going, there's something wrong with Joe Biden. We need to get him out of there. So now they're listening to George Clooney like he's somebody you listen to. And then he didn't like Kamala either. So so they're saying that he hexed the whole campaign. So George Clooney saved the world in a roundabout way, I guess you would say. <laughs> hey, Diana Baldwin, if you're listening, you said, Griff, I'm going to send that stuff back. You never got in touch with me. Honestly, I really don't know what you're talking about, um, but text me. I think you got my number. If you don't, get it from Gene, and uh, we'll figure it out, whatever it is you're talking about. Sorry if I didn't get back with you for whatever it is. I, I am pretty busy, you know, the podcast, uh, but between that and my own stuff I have to do around my house. and Because... You know, I, it's like to prepare for the podcast, I write all the question down. I go do it. Sometimes I try to bring in a little trivia thing, you know, and then I have to edit all of it and then I have to send it to Craig. So it's pretty time consuming. It's like a, a, a part-time job anyway. Um, it's not a 40 hour job by any means. And it's kind of fun too. I enjoy it. Uh, but it, it does take up a lot of my time. You know, you mentioned you mentioned those mon monkeys escaped, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. Right yeah. around the time, right after Trump was elected. Well, you never <laughs> believe it, but those monkeys escaped one other time. And oh, you'll yeah? never believe when it was. At the election? And it was in 2016, right after Trump was elected, the monkeys escaped. Yeah, yeah, let the monkeys out so we can blame yeah. the new virus Yeah, on isn't it. that yeah. a coincidence? They escaped right after Trump was yeah. elected in 2016, and then they escaped right after Monkey Trump was elected in 2020. It was the same place. South Carolina. 
Yeah, the same place. That's where they escaped in 2016. Yeah. And that and that one woman got ne near one of those monkeys and, and became critically ill and died. Just recently or No, 16? in 2016, that one woman that reported one of them apparently got kind of close to one of them. She died. She got extremely sick and died. Yeah, well, they're they're planning something. It's I mean, you didn't see any BLM. You didn't see. I mean, maybe they thought they were going to win, but there there's going to be a plan coming up. You know, this is all for entertainment entertainment purposes only. But there's they've got a plan that they're going to. Uh, yeah, they're definitely going to attack. Oh, they got something going on. They got. Something. I was out yeah. today. Gasoline was two dollars and forty, as low as two dollars and forty cents today. Well, all the investors it's are come already... down over, over about a dollar sixty in the last week. Yeah, they're they're already tooling up. You know, they're already getting the pipeline uh, trucks rolling and stuff. Yeah, they they know they know that it's going to happen. So the, all these investors are are gearing up again, and because they know it's drill, baby, drill. Um, Monty Fisher, he says. Columbus, Ohio was the Quaalude capital of USA in the 70s and 80s. Why Columbus, Ohio there, Monty? <laughs> oh, I forgot that bottle. <laughs> yeah, man, you were supposed to get that bottle. Oh, How I forgot that bottle. How close is it to you? It's not far. I go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to unplug here. Hold on. Does it still have coins in it? I, you know what? I, I don't even know what it's got in it anymore. It's real close, though. Hold on. And then I'll just keep re reading these. Uh, uh, here's one from Joe Mueller. I'll skip it because this, this uh, cheesehead's got a, a question for Craig, but Joe Mueller says, they need to fix the education system. They're teaching the kids to hate America. Exactly. You know, uh, these woke teachers all need to get fired, in my opinion. But do uh, you find it, Craig? Yeah, I knew exactly where it was. It was in my nightstand. There it is. It's got nothing in it. Damn, that is a freaking big bottle of Quaaludes, man. <laughs> yeah, it's my hand, yeah. That thing is about like a milk jug, almost it's, like a... It's like 500 Quaaludes were in there. And you can tell that's a Circa 70s for sure. That <laughs> bottle. Look at the lid. Is that lid's up, the paint's been rubbed off from screwing that thing on and off. That was on the plane, huh, Craig? Yeah, yeah, this was on the plane. Yeah. That was on the plane full of coins? Full of uh, quarters and 50 cent pieces. Bicentennial quarters and 50 cent pieces and dollars. And, and they came from Las Vegas when you and Ronnie were out. No, there. these... The ones that were in here were ones that I had just been collecting, but then uh, when me and when we were went to Las Vegas, I just bought a, I bought like six rolls of dollars. Just to, just damn! To if that bottle still had the label on it, methoquilone on the front of it, that what milligram and everything, Roar Seven Fourteen, that would be like a stone roadie. Uh, I think there was hot 500 selling item. Five hundred. There was five hundred in there. I believe. Yeah, I believe that would hold five hundred. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Uh, yeah, that you was know a what? Quaalude. That was a, well. You can kind of tell if. It, How if the it, hell did you get a bottle that big, man? That's you can tell that's a pharmacy bottle. Oh yeah. You know, I don't remember. <laughs> Somebody broke I probably into knew a somebody that robbed a pharmacy. I don't you know. must have. Because <laughs> who gets back in, That was back before I got with Skinner, man. I was a hoodlum. Uh, that, I mean, <laughs> you know, you could get a prescription of those of probably 50, you know, but 500 big, huge Sam's yeah, they came, Club. They come from a pharmacy. It, 
basically yeah. a, basically a Sam's Club box. The hell, them toilet. things sold for fifty cents a piece back then. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh really we paid we paid like yeah. five dollars a piece for them. oh I those things we were, were back in those days the, the, back in the day those things were 50 cents or something like that I don't well know. it wasn't like i was you know eating quaaludes all the time i think i may i may have taken five quaaludes in my <laughs> whole life you know <laughs> if that they were they weren't bricks i mean they? i was just a dabbler i just wanted to I've never been addicted to anything. I can't remember anything that I've ever been addicted to. Um, I, w I was addicted to food a little bit there. Well, I had one year I was up about 200, <laughs> but I came to my senses. That was a bad year. Um, I was going to uh, Hooters a lot, and I was working maybe, up in Georgia. Maybe I that's how much that, I paid. That maybe beer. I've Maybe that's what I paid for that bottle, fifty cents a piece. That'd be two hundred and fifty bucks. That sounds about right. Yeah, we we had to give <laughs> like five dollars for a for a quaalude back well, then. Well, you know, then you resold them. You know, probably I pretty probably resold them for a couple bucks a piece. I, I never paid for it. I don't really I was, remember that shit. Yeah, I had a friend that just had them and he gave them to me. You know, but they were like you know a treat they were like a treat that you got you know unexpectedly like you'd be going along not even thinking about it and then all of a sudden somebody go hey man i got some quaaludes and you'd be like no way okay let's go somewhere where we where we don't have to drive god i had <laughs> all that shit because you can't drive black beauties white crosses quaaludes percocet <laughs> uh what was the other ones um Oh, the Placidils, you mentioned that? Placidils, uh, yeah. the red the green and the, the reds. And uh, what you, else? Oh, you used God. to freeze the Placidils because you'd cut them in half. You would freeze them, and yeah, they, they were poke gel. A, poke, a hole, poke a hole in them, so when you ate them, they would ooze out. Yeah, yeah you'd get a faster buzz. Yeah. yeah. But you children don't listen to any of this this is this is you know stuff that you shouldn't be doing <laughs> just because i look like i survived okay and craig's still doing all right he's almost 75 years old and he's still alive he's a professional you can't you have to be a professional to do drugs like craig does <laughs> um cheesehead <laughs> wants to know craig when you were in the UK. Did you guys ever have, uh, did you guys ever hang around with uh, members of Dr. Feelgood? No, I don't remember. I don't remember no. that. No. Oh, uh, somebody asked a question. I, I think I might have it wrote down. Why I, why I pulled the table out of the one before the plane crash, why I pulled the table out of the floor. Well, shit, so you, the damn thing was right in front of us. You, you, you don't want a table right chest high when yeah. you're going down in a plane crash. You don't want a table right there. Did it come out easy? I, well, at the time it did. I just ripped it out of the ground. <laughs> it, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, it did. Um, I've got pieces of the poker table and two half poker chips that I found out at the crash site. Um, uh, I'll try to remember next time we come on to bring that so I can show you. Um, yeah, and I found that just laying weird. The, the, the poker table and the poker chips were all crumbled up together in a pile on the, in the dirt. And I guess people were going around and with these plastic bags and they were collecting up parts and they, they would bring the bag up to an examiner and they'd go, they would look at it to see if it was something in there of significant that would, you know, maybe tell a story as why the plane crashed. And if they said, okay, that's clean. We don't care anymore. They would go throw it in a, in a, a pile and then they ended up burying it. And I found one of those bags and I pulled it out of the dirt and all that crap fell out of it. And 
that's how I got it. it was weird that the table and the poker chips were right there. So just a little trivia there for you when I was out there at the crash site. Um, yeah, Joe Mueller, he says a liberal relative of his told him Trump is the antichrist because he received <laughs> a fatal head wound, and he lived. Yeah, the Bible says that the Antichrist will receive a fatal head wound and will live. Well, Trump just got nicked in the ear. <laughs> That's not a fatal <laughs> head wound. <laughs> now, Craig could be the Antichrist because he received a, a fatal head wound and lived. <laughs> yeah. All these fat people think I'm the Antichrist. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that, you know, religion, you know, if you if you read in the Bible the stuff that's going on right now, you know, it does. It looks like the end of times. You know, and I'm thinking, here I, you know, lived a nice, clean life, worked my ass off, you know, put money back so I could retire. And now that I'm retired, now I have to go through all this liberal woke crap. You know, the first <laughs> time this has ever existed since the Romans, when they were all, you know, that's how they finally went down. They were all woke. Basically, the Romans became woke, and they died. That's the civilization that ended because of the woke Romans. So, yeah, they had where we're getting sex changes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so uh yeah, yeah that that kamala they ask you know issue 41 out there that was the issue that uh was put up uh, uh about prosecuting uh those people out there that uh that were committing that were robbing stores and as long as it was under a thousand dollars, it was not a problem. And then they asked Kamala how she was going to vote on that, and she wouldn't comment. You know, so she okay. she thought it was just fine that people could go into a <clears throat> store and take a thousand dollars worth of stuff, and uh, you know, and just you know be okay with that. You know, any of you people think that stuff's okay? You're mentally ill. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, I mean, it's, you're you're freaking in, indoctrinated and freaking mentally ill, man. Well, we, you know, we had we were attacked, man. We were under communist rule, and we still are. Officially. She wanted sex sex changes for. For illegal aliens that were in prison, she wanted them to have sex changes and the, and to have yeah, you idiots pay for it. You people are so freaking stupid. I don't know how did you get so freaking stupid. And did you hear Elon Musk talking? I swear to God, this is I think is what he said, and I don't know if this is true or not. I was kind of like napping in the chair when he said it. Now you fact checkers go in there and check it out. But, uh, when, you know, they were talking about depopulating the earth and he, and Elon Musk says there's not enough people on the earth. He said, because the amount, the total population of the world would fit in New York city. Well, and I think, and I don't even think he said it would fill up the entire city. I don't think that's true. There's so many people in India. It's not even funny. India. Well, it's a big. That's a big city. You know, maybe maybe he said New York State, but I swore he said New York City, and, uh, and I think he said there's billions of people in India. <clears throat> there's billions of people in China, and yeah, there's. They say they say there's so many people in China you could just walk them a hundred abreast just walk them over a cliff and the the line would never end you know the useless eaters <laughs> oh uh wesley garrett says big fan listen every morning want to know craig do you make a good living as a roadie or did you have to work other jobs no i was just a roadie but did you make a good living at it Nah, I don't know. 
did okay. I, it had a lot of French benefits. Yeah. I do, you know, I, I, I did other stuff. I saw, I sold cars. I sold boats. I sold soul. I did all I I've sold, sold drugs. Stuff. I've sold stuff, drugs and stuff all my life. <laughs> Gene always says, he always says, <laughs> I sold got, stuff Craig all got... my life. I've, I've been a horse trader all my life, man. I grew up with horse traders. So I, you know, I just, Gene says, Craig, Craig has so much money. I told his son, Chad, to make sure before Craig dies to get that map <laughs> of where all that money's buried at his house, because ain't no way in hell he ain't a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, Wesley Garrett, did Ed King still make money from record sales when he left Skinner, or did his contract was it not set up for it to do that? Oh no, yeah, no, you his you, wife when, still at, when you when you're set up through what is it, ASCAP or whatever? Yeah. They they yeah, you're that it's you get paid if you yeah write a song or even if you play on a record you get a few cents every time it's played on the radio or whatever yeah every time there's money yeah there's players royalties there's writers royalties of course writers royalties are a lot more ed was just but you know that's enough. why ronnie that's why like ronnie made so much money because he wrote all the songs you know yeah. And then Alan and Gary, you know, they wrote most of the songs. Uh, and then that Sweet Home Alabama, you know, I guess Ed. Ed, and Ed his, King. Yeah, Ed. Did him and Gary split that? I I would, I I don't know. Ed always said he, he, he made a pretty good living off of Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you were around <laughs> him, you know. After the, you know, uh, the plane he said he made enough money and, off of uh, whoever was advertising it. Who was it? Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> he made a lot of money on chicken. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. I mean, uh, who? I mean, Bush didn't Bush play Alabama and the the the. the uh, Every God, uh, everybody's well, that song is, yeah, soundtrack. And uh, even Alabama stole the sweet home Alabama for the sign when you come into Alabama. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that sweet home? Was that something that was said before Ronnie used no. that in the song? Sweet home did, Alabama, no. Ronnie coined that phrase, sweet mm -hmm. home. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, the whole. There, you know, any anywhere you can drive into the state of Alabama on a freeway or a road, it says "Welcome to Sweet Home Alabama." So they they ought to be paying for that. <laughs> yeah, he coined that phrase. As far as I know, yeah, little does he know. Little does he know that what what's going on now since he did that. Homer Hancock says Jimmy Buffett has Margaritavilles, bars, and clubs all over. Yeah, there's a um, a Margaritaville over in Orlando. I think it's at Disney, and um, I know a guy who uh, is an artist, and he draws their T-shirts and um, posters and things like that, and he gets. It's kind of weird. It's like he'll draw something and he'll present it to him and they'll go, yeah, that sucks. Or yeah, we like that. And he, and he gets, if it's a something that sells a lot, he gets a, a percent of it. And yeah, that Margaritaville, man, that's some big, that's some big money. And then Jimmy <clears throat> had like a, a huge yacht and like two or three jets. The guy was rolling, man. And then he, he was broke at one time. Just huh. like Trump, and I think Trump said in 92, he was walking down the road with this lady, and he says to her, he says, you see that that homeless guy over there in the corner? 
He goes, he's worth more than me. He goes, I'm $900 million in debt. <laughs> <laughs> he had to borrow that money from the bank so he could make his money back. And they weren't going <clears> to <throat> give it to him. And, and he told him, okay, well, you're going to lose your ass because I'm going to get it from somebody and they're going to get some good money out of it. And so they said, yeah, you're right. We'll give it to you. And so they gave him a loan and then he made, because <clears throat> he was broke, man. He was in the hole back in the nineties. I heard, I heard something <clears throat> to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no Trump, man, he's, I get, they say when you make your first million, you could take it away and you could, and you could make it back. And once you learn how to make it, which you already made your first million, Craig, so it shouldn't be hard. To I don't know how to get it back, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to spend it, but I don't know how to get it back. <laughs> Steve Jones says, uh, long before Ed was on Facebook, he had a website that I followed. I'm sure he said on there that he got uh, Ronnie that shirt that who are the stones anyway? What's that shirt? So who the hell, who the F who the are the stones? Who, who yeah. So that? I, so Where I guess it come it, from Ed gave it to him. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. That's what it, he's saying. Steve Jones sense, said yeah. that's what he thinks. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to commit to it. That's what I said. I just speculated that, uh, um, well, that's a uh, pretty good scan formation oh. if it's true, but uh, Steve Jones said he remembers that. So, cool. oh, well, cool, cool, Steve Jones. Good and Steve. then he also says, uh, Craig, the piano uh, Billy used on whistle test was a Steinway. You can see it written on the side during the Freebird. <coughs> hmm. oh, okay, so so he's going to be our new fact checker. <laughs> you know, to, yeah. And then he asked, Craig, did you ever bring a chick backstage that was batshit crazy and made Ronnie wonder, where the hell did you get her from? <laughs> That's a good question. No. <laughs> no? They were all okay? You never had any of that? I never, I never had. I never had any backstage during when I was working. No, when you went out to get the chicks for the band. Oh, 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 oh. And you oh, took, oh. yeah, and you took them no, backstage. I, Did I Ronnie think, ever go, I don't get her think, out of here? No, uh-uh. You didn't ever get any pukers or anything like that? No. I had a buddy, my buddy named Gray. and I got uh, pretty good taste in women. We were on the way. I think it was um, to to um, in my opinion, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. I think it was we were on our way to there at the Lakeland Civic Center, and my buddy he was all hopped up, you know, in the front seat, and you know he was riding shotgun. Man, I can't wait to get there. You know, we're burning some dubs and getting ready for the show. And there's these girls hitchhiking on the side of the road, and um, so. Uh, uh, my buddy's driving and, and gray goes pull over let's pick these chicks up you know and tim he was kind of reserved guy no man we're going to the concert you know we ain't messing with those chicks pull over pull over so we pull over and these girls get in <laughs> and, and they were all drunk and then on the way there my buddy gray had one of these hoodies with a you know the hoodie that you pull over and the chick puked in his hoodie and it went all down his shirt and it just he couldn't go to the concert after that because he was smelling <laughs> he smelled like vomit <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, he don't like to tell that story he's got a lot of stories but that's not one he likes to tell <laughs> but you never had uh like some old drunk chicks coming back there and puking all over everybody? no uh -uh. no no it's amazing no, uh -uh. I, know, I, was, I only got classy women. I was talking to uh, <laughs> Leslie about Artemis's movie, and she she said that part where they, the women were all walking around topless and everything. She said that's bullshit. Yeah, 
Yeah, that never happened. Yeah, and she said she didn't really appreciate that because <laughs> you know she's got grandkids, you know, and yeah. they see that yeah. and they're like, "Wow, you were doing that, Grandma!" You know, and she's like, she didn't like that, man. You know, no, uh -uh. because that the way that was portrayed, everybody was like walking around with her top off, and yeah, it was almost that that part was almost like uh, almost famous or whatever. Yeah, it was nothing like that. Yeah. Now, I've been to like a couple of marijuana farms where there were like girls walking around with like a t shirt, you know, with no bra and hair under their arms up there in Gainesville. Remember that, <laughs> Craig? Back in the day, those girls let the hair under their arms grow out, the hippie girls. <laughs> you don't remember Not that? Very not very often yeah no. and they let and the hair on their legs and under their arms it's not like i was more around the hippies than you were man <laughs> <laughs> no no the only the only hairy woman i was around was the amish women they're <laughs> they're, they're hairy <laughs> the hairy legged girls yeah they did they had hair. Well, on yeah their legs. during uh yeah when, when they're 18 they can go out on their out on their own and we used to go to the bars where the the hairy the hairy, hairy legged women were at that was the amish women they would they would go out on the weekends and get crazy <laughs> the hairy legged women yeah amish women yeah they were wild <laughs> i saw some some amish stuff they were showing on tv this guy he wanted to go live with the amish amish family for like a week <laughs> It was either a week or a weekend. And so he thought he could just go to the Amish country and just walk up and knock on somebody's door and go, Hey man, can I sleep in your barn and help you work around here? And they were like, <laughs> no. So he finally <laughs> found some guy. And I first thing I thought of was you because they were all fat. You know, we, we, the, the, the father was a big fat guy and <laughs> and then the mother came waddling in and she was huge, man. And then the daughter was fat and the son was fat. And, uh, and, the, and then I was like, well, what are they eating? And then the guy goes, let's go out to the garden. And they, they, they were eating clean, man. They were eating clean. They had all grew all their own vegetables, but they must've been really eating a lot of food, man, to get that fat. Cause they were big. Yeah, all my all my dogs came from an Amish breeder, and when I would go see them when they were puppies, and before I could take them, you know, I would I'd take a picture of them, but I'd I'd have to you know make sure I cleared it with the guy and make sure that I, oh he, yeah he knew that I wasn't taking a picture of him. I just wanted to take a picture of the so dog. When you, they were cool with that. Yeah, you can't take a picture of an Amish person unless they're working. <laughs> so yeah, you can't take any pictures so know. did the guy like ask you when you were looking at the dogs which one does the like <laughs> no no i i i told him like i the... i called him up i told him uh, all all the ones i got i told him i wanted this the runt of the litter the smallest one they had and uh yeah they were all real small when i got them Leon, God, Leon would fit in your hand. <laughs> so, so Leon and Wicker are, are both Amish breed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amish. all of them. The first Leon, the first Leon, and and uh, the yeah, Leon and Leon and Wicker are half brothers. They came from the same mother, our same oh. father. They had the same. Leon and Wicker have the same father, but a different mother. Well, when I came up to see you, I went to the Amish land, which is right, not that far from you. It's only like, a, no, uh -uh. At, like about 45 minutes, right? Something like that. Maybe. An well, hour. no, Hartville, Hartville is only 10 minutes from here. Yeah. And so I went into this little, uh, Amish town, you know, and they were going down the road with the buggy and the horse and the buggy. And then I go into this, uh, this like, a uh, one of these, uh, collectible stores. And I go in there and I go back into the albums and then I was going through all the albums and bingo, a, a second helping album, pull it right <laughs> out of there. And then I was staying with this girl, you know, that girl that I knew to kick me out of her house. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and so, so I went ahead and just packed my shit 
and got out of there, you know, while I getting was good. And I meant to get you to sign that damn thing. And, uh, you've been down here several times and I still haven't had you sign it yet, but that second helping album. Yeah. I got that out of that. Um, yeah, that was some new old stock. That was a good, that, that was a good find in there. So you can't find Leonard Skinner albums in a secondhand store like that anywhere. If you, if you find one, you hit, you hit the lottery because people, they don't, they don't let those Skinner albums go. But anyway, Craig, that's all the comments and questions, man. And we're done and it's a wrap. All right. Well, uh, let me see here. What was his name? Do you have the address for this girl? To, uh, is it a girl or a guy that got this book, Craig? Send me, a, uh, send me the, when you get paid for it uh, and I'll send it out. Yeah. But. Jeff, on this uh, vest, read your, I sent you an email, and I sent the document of authenticity. I, I typed typed a, 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 a formatted one to make sure if there's something you want me to change on it. Plus, I didn't put on there the fact that you wanted me to sign the, the jacket, too. I just put it on there that it was, you know, all the stuff you wanted to know about Billy. But I explained out that, but read your email and then to tell me what you want me to write on the back of the vest. And, um, yeah, and then write me back. <laughs> so, yeah. That's it. So yeah. That's, uh, it's another episode of the Stone Brody Show. And uh, until next time, see you later, alligator at the wild crocodile. And uh, we'll call that a wrap and cut.